All right. Moving on to adrenal glands. Now, we will focus on the picture on the right hand side. So here we have the kidneys. These are the kidneys. And on top of the kidneys, we have this triangular gland. These are called adrenal glands. If you make a sagittal section of the adrenal gland, you see an inner medulla in orange color and an outer cortex. Okay. Now the cortex secretes different hormones than the medulla and we will zoom in and look at the secretions of adrenal cortex and medulla separately so this is what i usually draw in a regular class but since we are not meeting i just thought i would draw it out for you so we have the adrenal gland sitting on top of the kidney and in a sagittal section you see the outer cortex inner medulla in green from the cortex cortical steroids are released and from the medulla catecholamines like epinephrine and norepinephrine these are released in the ratio of four to one now we will focus on the cortex first and look at the different types of cortical steroids that are released from the cortex and learn about their specific functions okay so let's start with the cortex first the cortex releases cortical steroids know that the cortical steroids are derived from cholesterol there are three types of cortical steroids that we will talk about. The first one is mineralocorticoids. The mineralocorticoids play a major role in maintaining sodium potassium balance. Aldosterone, which is a hormone, is the most notable mineralocorticoid. Aldosterone stimulates kidneys to retain water and sodium while excreting potassium into the urine as our kidneys retain more water and more sodium that helps to increase blood volume and blood pressure the second cort uh, corticosteroid that we will talk about is glucocorticoids and glucocorticoids play a major role in metabolism of glucose and other organic molecules. Cortisol is the predominant glucocorticoid. And the third type of corticosteroid is adrenal androgens, which are basically weaker androgens and they actually supplement sex steroids secreted by the gonads so these are the three main types of cortical steroids that are produced from the adrenal cortex okay moving on to the uh, to some of the effects so the cortisols and other glucocortis sorry cortisol and other glucocorticoids they have a good effect on metabolism and the effects include stimulation of protein degradation gluconeogenesis and decrease in glucose utilization thereby increasing blood glucose levels and this also stimulates lipolysis meaning fat break breakdown to release more free fatty acid into the blood. What's the point here? The point is the cortisol and other glucocorticoids, they work to provide more energy molecules into the blood. So having a positive effect on metabolism. So that's the ultimate goal, okay, of the cortisol and other glucocorticoids. They provide more energy molecules into blood by these processes that's all you have to know 
Okay, so this slide is kind of talking about what I just wrote down. Um, adrenal cortex secretes hormones derived from cholesterol, corticosteroids or corticoids, three types, mineralocorticoid, glucocorticoid, and adrenal androgens. Functions of cortisol, we just talked about this, stimulates protein degradation, stimulates uh, gluconeogenesis and inhibits glucose utilization and also stimulates lipolysis. Okay. All right. Now, talking about exogenous glucocorticoids that are sometimes prescribed to us, and those play a very, very important role in suppressing our immune response, and they actually help in inhibition of inflammation. But they can have some negative side effects as well. But know that exogenous glucocorticoids, uh, they help with inflammation. Okay, looking at the medulla. From the adrenal medulla, the catecholamines are released. We know that. And the catecholamines are... Uh, epinephrine and norepinephrine together they form the catecholamines now the adrenal medulla is activated by the sympathetic response and we did see this while talking about the neuronal stimuli remember the neural stimuli we talked about so this is neural stimulation okay now the effects of this epinephrine and norepinephrine which are released from the adrenal medulla are very similar to sympathetic innervation but when these are released they last actually longer and these hormones they help to increase cardiac output respiratory rate mental alertness dilate coronary blood vessels and elevate metabolic rates okay um, we also talked about the effect of epinephrine and norepinephrine in increasing cardiac output and heart rate uh, in the beginning of the lecture and we talked about the synergistic effect of these two hormones in increasing cardiac output and heart rate if you remember Moving on to pancreas. Pancreas is a mixed gland. It has both exocrine and endocrine functions. However, for this lecture, we will focus on the endocrine functions of the pancreas. Now, the endocrine cells are located in specific uh, pancreatic islets, also called islets of Langerhans. And there are two types of cells. Actually, there are three types. Uh, but we will actually focus on just two types of cells that are found in the pancreatic islets. We will talk about the alpha cells that produce a hormone called glucagon. We will also talk about beta cells that produce a hormone called insulin. So let's look into the alpha and the beta cells. So we are looking into the endocrine functions of pancreas and scattered all over the pancreas, we have some clusters of cells. Those are called pancreatic islets. In humans, there are about 1 million islet cells. So we will start by talking about the beta cells first. The beta cells release a hormone called insulin. And insulin, as we know, helps to lower blood glucose level. So let's say we have in and out for lunch with fries and with a milkshake therefore we are having a very sugary meal due to this our blood plasma glucose level will go up obviously and that will trigger the beta cells of the pancreas to release insulin insulin in turn will bind to specific receptors on the plasma membrane of target cells and initiate signal transduction and as insulin binds to their receptors on the target cells 
the glute carrier proteins are translocated to plasma membrane and now all of a sudden the plasma membrane has a lot of these glute recept glute carrier proteins and as we know the glute carrier proteins help in glucose transport so they will help to help in glucose transportation from the extracellular environment to the inside of the cell via facilitated diffusion and as more and more glucose molecules are taken up by the cells plasma glucose level drops and that sends a negative feedback inhibition uh, signal and we and the beta cells then stop producing more and more insulin so to review we have insulin which is a hormone secreted from the beta cells of the pancreas after a sugary meal we are having a lot of sugar so blood glucose level goes up obviously that causes the beta cells to release the hormone insulin insulin in turn binds to specific receptors on the target cell and binding of insulin on the target cell triggers a signal transduction pathway due to this uh, glute carrier proteins are translocated to the plasma membrane which helps glucose transport it into the cells so glucose is transported from the extracellular environment into the cells by facilitated diffusion as glucose enters inside the cell plasma glucose level drops thereby maintaining homeostasis okay so i did mention that insulin works on the target cells so what are the target organs or target cells for insulin well insulin specifically targets skeletal muscles liver and adipose tissue do you need to remember this for the lecture exam yes you do know that insulin targets skeletal muscles liver and adipose tissue insulin also indirectly stimulates an enzyme called glycogen synthetase in the skeletal muscle and liver which catalyzes conversion of intracellular glucose to glycogen so the idea is the cells of skeletal muscles liver and adipose tissue not only uptake insulin but with the help of the enzyme glycogen synthetase the free intracellular glucose is also converted into glycogen which is stored in these uh, which is stored in the liver adipose tissue and skeletal muscles for future use and intracellular glucose is also stored as fat in adipose tissue okay moving on to glucagon now glucagon and insulin they are antagonists to each other their functions are just opposite so if insulin helps to lower blood glucose obviously glucagon will help to increase blood glucose level glucagon is released from the alpha cells of the pancreatic islets and i'll stop here and then start with a new video